think what we need is for the town administrator to um, explain what this parcel of land is going to be used for, because we haven't done that in public. Okay, um, six acres um, in the part of the industrial slash business park that's right next to the power plant at the end of uh, Progress Way. It has been discussed a couple of times in um, executive session. Um, it was, the proposal was not accepted a couple of times because of a low price um, which has since come up, but also because of concern whether this was the right uh, part of the industrial park that should be used for uh, this project. That was again uh, discussed at the last uh, council meeting in executive session and at the end of that um, the council authorized um, me to go forward and um, bring it to this point which is that there is a PNS. Uh, I did that together with uh, the solicitor's office. We had a meeting uh, with the applicant. Um, Peter Squirts um, was there. He had several questions for the applicant. And I also wanted to make sure that the applicant knew that um, just because there would be a PNS doesn't mean that uh, the actual proposal itself has been approved because the proposal still needs its normal approvals from planning board or zoning board or whatever it, it may be. So they understand that. Um, this is a wood processing facility which involves the drying of wood. Um, they're using fairly large kilns that are um, inside a large building and uh, they dry it for purposes of uh, firewood but I believe other purposes as well. This is an operation that is currently operating in Portsmouth and um, they're looking to move at least part of the business uh, to this location. Questions from the council? I have some. Go ahead. So my understanding of the last discussion was to continue to go forward. One, of, one issue was, in fact, to discuss the price, but there were in, in my mind, other issues that were going to be resolved, and I believe that it, there were going to be some discussions with Tony regarding the actual use of this property. And um, I understand that we're saying, well, we're, we're putting on it on the applicant to understand that just because we accept this offer doesn't mean that he's not going to need all these other approvals. But I'm a little <coughs> concerned that that we're not even, or I'm not even sure the level of approval that's going to be required for a project like this. I have some other questions about it. Um, is it my understanding that this, and, and we've never seen a site plan for this. We don't have a lot of specifics or details here. I mean, on the storage facility, we got a site plan. We got to talk to the applicant. We got to ask questions. I mean, we don't have any of that. If I'm not mistaken, this particular application is going to require zoning relief, correct? It is, yes. So it's going to need zoning relief. I also did bring to the town administrator. What? Hey, 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 talk out loud. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon. Oh, but it does need zoning relief. Yes. That's the answer. So okay, that it's going to need zoning relief. I, I also did later go to the administrator because I'll admit, you know, after our executive session, I went and did a little research because it was explained to us that not only do they want to expand, but they have issues with the neighbors. So one of the things that I found out is that in Portsmouth, they had to get a noise variance. And Portsmouth noise standards are the same standards that we have. And the noise variance that they were granted was not only for the weekdays, but also to operate on Saturdays. Now, I'd like to know more about that, especially because this is located in some of the, you know, best land in the industrial park. I don't want to orphan or not be aware that potentially we're affecting other pieces of property in the industrial park because this is louder than any of us 
think it might be. I, I mean, I realize that decibel meters and all that are a little funky and a little wonky, and I, I get that. But nonetheless, this business in Portsmouth, at a smaller size than they're proposing here, had to get a noise variance to operate above the decibel level. Well, is it a larger size? Because that wasn't made specific. It, it, well, it sounds like it is. I mean, it, it sounds like it's <coughs> going to be. I mean, the operation in Portsmouth is a half an acre. This is six acres. Um, you know, I'd also like to find out about, only because I saw a couple of them on the road, the size of the big trucks that bring in the raw lumber. Those trucks are gargantuan. And I don't know whether or not we've thought about whether or not that's, and I'm not trying to be against this, but I just think everything should be on the table. We should have all these facts. And I also think that the potential purchaser should, you know, understand that, you know, we've identified these various things that if this were to go forward, you would need relief on, and there's no guarantee of that. And, you know, because going back to, I mean, if you want to be considered business unfriendly, sell somebody a piece of property, and then they find out after the fact, that there are all these hurdles. I just, I just don't feel like I have enough information right now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that they're more interested in in a price that we like a little better. But I need more than this to be able to go forward here. Have you seen a site plan where the building's going to be? It's in? just a very rough. I mean, it's, it's going to be you know just a big of a building basically within on the inside you're going to have these kilns but also a lot of the storage because he wants to keep everything inside I, if i may we were given direction to take this further to look into the issues that you just have mentioned we met with the solicitor and the applicant to go through all those issues so it's not as if yeah, we didn't do any of that. Yeah, but we don't have the answers. You might have the answers, but you didn't share them. Well, with us. Okay. I'm sorry. If if maybe you should just have the interviews then with with the well, people. Well, that is a little bit sarcastic. No, it's not meant to be sarcastic. I mean, you asked us to do certain things. Yeah, and you handed me this and told me to sign it without permission from the town council. You did this the other day. You said this needs to be signed, and that's when I looked into it. And I said I don't even have the vote for this. So please do not get sarcastic with me, because you asked me to sign this, and I didn't even have the vote for it. So why don't we move forward and try not to go any further? Than Madam that. President, so some of the concerns with the size of what's going on over there, the, I went over to Bell Sales, and the noise ordinance he needed is because he has a house five feet behind his property. He's, in, he's, in a, he's residential. There's houses all around him. Up in the industrial park, you won't. There's not going to be anybody near him. And it's, it's I mean, maybe, I, I, I don't know, but I'd like to know more. And I, I don't know if, whether or not, as you know, I mean, you've been there, mm -hmm. I haven't. Yeah, so well. I don't know. I don't know if that noise carries. I don't know if, you know. I don't know if he's going to have one or two there. Well, he's I don't got, know if the North Christopher Avenue, na that neighborhood, which is the closest, um, again, he operates on a Saturday, are going to be going, hey, wait a second, you know, this is, this is. But we, we, we discussed all this, though, and... and mm -hmm. Madam President? Yes. One of the, okay, one of the things, to my mind, in that meeting, there were a lot of questions. And while we did say to you, you know, go forward and with this, to talk about, talk with this, with this guy, and, but at the same time, you don't get a carte blanche. It's like, I didn't know anything else was going on. I've heard two buildings are going up there. I heard the noise is going to be humongous. And it's, I don't know. Well, well, to me, it's just like, again, it's like, why are we rushing? One of the reasons we got the casino money so that we don't have to rush and let everybody come in and just go willy-nilly. This is prime, prime land. And it's just like, I think the questions that we're asking and were asked in that last meeting were very legitimate. And I thought today, when I saw this, the agenda, I was like, well, we don't even, we didn't even get the answers yet. So for me, it was like, why would I sign something that we don't even have the answers for? And we have a lot of questions. 
And, and to me, that's, that's part of the communication. Yeah, we asked you to do that, that's a directive, but then the, slip, the flip, flip side is you come back to us and you tell us, and not just with, okay, here's the answers, go ahead and sign it. And so that's where, you know, that's the part, that's, that's the second piece that maybe we have to say that as well. But I don't think we should have to do that, and that's where I think it's gotta be, and it's, uh, you know, I'm sorry that this is the last meeting, before a new council comes in, but you know, so be it. I don't want to rush things through. We just rushed through a, a, a solar uh, one inch that didn't work. So I've, to me, we're doing the same, you know, this is like, it just, it just keeps going on and on, and I just want to stop it. May I respond? Uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. Because I have a suggestion. There have been discussions in executive session about the nature of this property and whether it was a good idea to locate this business. Or I was not an advocate for it. Mm -hmm. All I did was at one point remind the council that in a previous executive session, some people had said, well, and this was after a very large project was voted down, um, maybe we should consider the smaller proposals such as this one. And we were to look at, you know, either other places in the park, which is easier said than done. We certainly tried, but how you actually find another parcel in this park that might be a better location, I really don't know. I don't know either. And so we then had the same discussion in the executive session, and the council, you know, voted to go forward with it. And yes, there were several issues, and frankly, I have not been rushing this. I've also not been doing I this. I wasn't but, saying no, you. Okay, but I don't I, think personally I, we that was the collective this wisdom. has been a rush at all. This has taken a very long time. Um, you know, these people are looking for this place to actually expand their business, and they, they can't wait much longer. We have taken those issues very carefully. We have spoken with people in Portsmouth. You speak to people in Portsmouth, they invited the solicitor to talk to their solicitor and say, you have to understand that this operation has had all the support of you know, Portsmouth with the exception of one neighbor who has you know, a serious problem uh, with, with this particular uh, use next to his property. It's uh, located closely to residential development surrounded by it and there are no complaints from the other people so you know we, we we looked into that I'm fully prepared to talk to you about that I'm sorry if I haven't put That's a memo together <laughs> well um, I could suggest something I don't know if you all go for it but there's a new council new council coming aboard um, they're gonna have to suffer suffer the consequences if this is not a good Fit, or if it is a good fit, I think we should table this, um, get all the answers that this council has asked for the new council, and have them make this decision. Um, that's what I think, because I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel our, our answers were, were um, our questions were answered, and um, I just don't feel that making this decision is appropriate this time. So, um, well, I. I want to mention that with the process with the storage uh, facility, they actually did a council presentation uh, where we could ask questions and, and um, they had a diagram and stuff like that. So maybe that um, should be scheduled before we move further with this. I think, that that's an, I think that that's an excellent idea and I think that's the best way to get all these issues out on the table. And then the public can be here also to ask questions and concerned neighbors may be able to ask questions. And quite frankly, the people that are gonna do this could answer them better than any of us. So, so I think it's appropriate to just um, table this until the next meeting and ask for uh, a public presentation on this. Is, is there a meeting scheduled for November the 13th? Yes, that would be our next meeting. Well, it would be the new yeah, council's new. But it, it's a new council. But it's possible it couldn't be a new council if there's a recount, correct, or something like that, if there was something. If it's not recount. certified. Right. If right, the not vote, certified, if right. The, the vote's not certified. Exactly. Right. So, so we could, could move it to no, we, 
We could move it to November 27th right. so, if we feel. Well, that's, yeah, 26th is the 26th. Board. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to lose this guy if we don't. Okay. Randy, if we do yeah. sell the uh, yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah, I know, but it's been the place has been empty for 20 years, and we finally got people coming that. in. But Randy, we have sold property, but we don't want to, like Christine said, we just don't want to sell it to anyone. Well, it'd be nice if you did come and make a presentation. That would be nice if we could. Yeah. So we would well, know what's going on. I mean, you're you're you were fortunate. You went over. I went over and I went up to the property and I walked had it. The chance to do that. So yeah. it'd be nice. And talk to ask questions. And I also think to be fair, the applicant. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of language in here that says basically the applicant you knows assuming responsibility. But I think the applicant or the potential buyer needs to know all the things. It, I mean, if, if we're going to be business friendly, we ought to lay it out up front. You know, we're you know that this is going to need zoning relief. You, you know, talk about the noise. What are you going to do if you need decibel? I mean, I think, I think that these are things that are are worthwhile. Frankly, I'd like to hear about the volume of trucks, and I'd like to have you know police and fire wave and say, because these are big, big, big trucks. I'd like to have you know police and fire weigh in and say, okay, you know, keep in mind that you know we may be trying to get out on a call and between having something let out at Longplex and a stack up of those big trucks. I mean, I just want to bet this all the way through before we, or whoever, I hope, is here, bets it all the way through before we sign this. So, I'd like to entertain the motion. I'll make it. Like to, as a motion to put it off. I know. Motion to table. Motion, motion, motion table. to table until the next council meeting, November the 26th or the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, um, that motion. Second. And, and maybe instruct the town administrator to have. See if they want to do a presentation. See if they would like to come in front of the council and make a presentation. Well, we can't say, do you, would you like to make them come in front of us because we, we already agreed on this money. Like We'd yeah, like to know if you could come but and we make already a agreed on, the, on uh, Are we opening ourselves up to a lawsuit, Tony, no. by not selling no. it or not? It's Even though we took his money? Doesn't we matter. didn't take his money. We didn't, he didn't give, him us, give us a deposit? This, mm -hmm. this says we took a deposit. Yeah. $10,000 deposit. We That'd be an, an execution, on the execution of the agreement. Yeah. So we, yeah, never, we, we didn't take their money? Yet. No. no. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Well, hold on. Before you go, it says right here we took $10,000 as a deposit. That's on, on, on that's upon execution. Okay. They haven't signed either. All right. All right. Motion's been made and seconded for the discussion. Yeah, I, I don't see why we can't have, if they're amenable to coming in to the next council meeting on the 13th, so it doesn't stall because that, that's putting you off a whole month. And then, yeah, it's my birthday. If I get real I might not be here. Right. So, so if, if they're amenable to come in to the next council meeting to do a presentation, it's certainly it's it's public and it'll be public information. So, so whatever the next council is, they'll have that information. Well, I was just thinking that the next council meeting might be a little hectic because you got people coming in. Swearing in ceremony. It's going to be yeah. a little it more is. Veterans Day. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that Veterans, Day? Veterans Day on the 12th. Well, yes. I got to tell you that uh, historically, that council agenda for the first council is, is 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 not big. I'm purpose. It's quick. Yeah, I'm purpose. But I think it's a good feel good thing though. Coming to the yeah get, yeah they. All right, so we'll make it for November 13th. Is that is, well? Is, that isn't Joe's motion though. He'd have to be the next council next available council meeting that. Yeah. No. The agenda, if the agenda warrants it, put it on for the 13th. All right, do we have a second to those? Motion's been made and second. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, town administrator, discussion and possible action on remaining street lights. <coughs> This is um, related to the LED conversion of streetlights in town, uh, most of which has been done. Um, the question came up, what to do with um, the remaining lights that have been purchased, where they should be installed. 
And as part of that, uh, a question needs to be answered, what needs to be done uh, with poles that currently do not have lights? Um, the vendor, PRISM, asked us uh, to let them know what the town thought the priorities were. Um, I asked police and fire to look at the list and give us their feedback as to where they thought it might be most important to have uh, lights installed. Uh, they've done that and the DPW director has reviewed all of that and then has ranked, uh, or not ranked I think, but has come up with this simplified spreadsheet uh, that was based on the PRISM spreadsheet of lights um, that could be installed and where he as well as police and fire thought it would make sense. That's not the same as that everybody agrees with that because getting a light where there was no light before, not everybody likes the uh, idea, but oh, you, have, you passed this out? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I only got that this afternoon. Oh, I didn't know you were handing them to me. I think you're throwing them at me. I didn't throw. No, just the one. Yeah. Anybody oh. else need any? Are they coming? Um, and so the question is whether the council uh, would want to take uh, take this up, discuss it, take action on it. Uh, it's basically the tail end of the uh, LED streetlight conversion. Madam President, yes. um, I, I'd just like to say I think that this, you know, diving into which poles and streets should get lights versus uh, which ones shouldn't. Um, I think that that feels to me like it's more of an administrative task than not really a, a council task. And and so I, with that, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, you know, uh, direct the administrator to work with public safety to determine the most uh, effective places to put the remaining street lights at uh, their discretion. Got a motion? That's, that's my motion. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Can, I ask a question? can you... Um, j just so I can understand this, existing street light means there's not a street light there now. In That's this correct. Category. DPW opinion of top 25, those are the ones that DPW is recommending? Correct. Um, and then on the DPW comments, what is, if it says no and then it says found, um. what does that mean? Rick. Which which particular one is that? So Corey's Lane, for Corey's example, Lane. says no, but then it says found. East Mellow Drive says the same thing. Found, found. I Hill. It was uh, okay. hiding. It was under a spell. You have this, Rick? It was yes. off. Okay. You didn't so see it at night. That, what does that mean, Rick? <laughs> uh, what that example, Corey's Lane? Okay, Corey's Lane, that means that particular poll number was not found. Therefore, it was not ranked. Now, uh, they could have been... Poem? Can't, so the poll has not, there was no poll found. Right. PRISM submitted the list of polls with, uh, that they thought some lights could be put on. Mm -hmm. uh, all lights were already there. When we went out, the no poll number was found. And a gotcha. lot of that is due to uh, inaccuracies between uh, old Narragansett Electric, now National Grid, and Ver old AT&T, which is now Verizon, poll numbers. Yeah, that's so those little plaques not. that they mount on the back. Sometimes they get popped off, too. You never know. Right. And yeah. sometimes other poll numbers were there. They might have gone 5, 6, and then all of a sudden skipped to 9, and they still listed it as 8, for instance. Yep. So we could not rank that or, or give a recommendation because the poll number, as indicated, was not there. And the ones that say has LED means? If it says no and has LED, what does that mean? Right. Uh, again, sometimes because of the record keeping, uh, which I'm not finding fault with, uh, but they listed the poll as being one of the 43 left to consider, and it already had an LED lamp on it. So we did not rank that one either because it already had been converted. So, so ignore the nouns. <laughs> so ignore the so ignore the bounds and the has L, has LED. You know, there's a part of me that sort of agrees with what John says. On the other hand, you know, street lights are funny things for people who live in neighborhoods. And I don't think it would be a bad idea, not that we have to have a public hearing, but to at least publish this so that people who live in these neighborhoods have a chance to weigh in. And it's always possible that there may be some place that we didn't think of 
that somebody comes forward and says, hey, listen, it makes a really good case of why there should be a street light. I, I'm not saying we should turn it into a big public thing, but I mean, I, I'd like to know if I lived on a pretty quiet, dark street, if I was all of a sudden getting a street light, I just, I, I, I think we should just publish this and then give people a chance to weigh in and then go from Yeah, there. because this wasn't back up published, right, Nancy? This wasn't in our packet, so. Nobody saw the only thing I would the only thing I would counter to that though is if you look at their top twenty five rankings, I mean we're talking about major roads that have street lights elsewhere. This is just additional lights, I mean poles that we just don't have street lights on. Probably I mean a main road, you know Crandall Road, like I may. The main reason that I thought it should be uh, discussed by you is for that very reason that, um, and I know from personal experience that not all of the LED lights are perfectly installed or perfectly fine-tuned or whatever, and it can be a total pain uh, to live with. So we're gonna get complaints. Right. And, and, and so doing something, and I would consider that if you wanna delegate it to us or just have us do our job, we would do that as part of our job, I think. We would need to do that, but it would be helpful to, for the council to say, please reach out to or let it be known that these are on the list so that people can comment. Yeah, I mean, because this wasn't posted as part of the backup, I'd like this to become public so people can see it. And I do think that um, the right way to do it is to, you know, let people know and um, stick it on the website and stick it on the website and, and at least make it public. And also maybe give, no, maybe there is some place where somebody comes forward that we haven't thought of and makes a really good case where, listen, we desperately need a street light here and nobody thought of it. So. I'd like to amend my motion to include uh, asking the administration to do proper due diligence and asking uh, or publishing the list so that residents may have a say before we move forward and install the lights. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Administrator Chief Lloyd approval to advertise the potential new hiring list for fire by the EMT cardiac. Um, what? what? Approval to advertise the potential new hiring list for fire fight, EMT firefighter EMT cardiac slash paramedic, right? All right. That's just missing from there. A memorandum of understanding for lateral hiring of firefighters, EMT cardiac, and EMT paramedic. Um, so you got that in front of you? Yep. This, this actually came up um, during, negotiations. during the negotiations of uh, the contract. And it was noted that the existing MOU has expired. Um, it was uh, adopted at the time for the exact reasons we have right now, which is that we don't have, um, we have a problem recruiting and filling vacancies. And so to make that easier, as well as to uh, help us get qualified uh, people on board as quickly as possible, the council approved an MOU uh, with the union by which we uh, are authorized to hire uh, laterally. And the, the request is that uh, we renew that MOU uh, so that that particular method can be uh, used right now. Um, depends a little bit on who you talk to, how many vacancies there are, but there are vacancies that still need to be uh, filled. And it actually would be very helpful for purposes of um, moving the negotiations forward if we had this back in place. And then I, w then I understand that the hiring list has been exhausted, so you need that to go forward also. That's correct. I went to the very last person on the list, and uh, they chose another job. So, Madam President, yes. so neither one of these has got anything to do with the negotiations. I mean, we can talk about it. Yes. Right? right. Okay. Yes. Madam President, yes. I'd like to make a motion to grant the administrator and the chief uh, the approval to advertise a potential new hiring list for firefighter slash EMT cardiac and EMT paramedic. been made in second, although, and this is for the um, starting of the list. Correct. Okay. Motion's been made in second. All those in favor? 
And then I need another motion. All right, Madam uh, President, I'd like to uh, make another motion uh, to approve the memorandum of understanding for uh, lateral hiring of firefighters uh, slash EMT cardiac and EMT paramedic. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Go get us Thank some you. guys, Chief. Thank you. All right. Bids and requests for proposal DPW Director Rogers approval to award bid for TEXA scanning tool to TR Systems LLC Gilbert SC for $9,494.95. Funding to come from police, fire, and DPW. We've discussed this before. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. And thank you for three weeks ago the permission to advertise for bid. I learned something that night. I wasn't aware prior to the prep for the agenda that. Uh, council approval was required to just put it out to bid. So tonight I would like approval to actually purchase uh, the Texas scan tool that was submitted at the 94.94.95. And that. Now this is under what you estimated. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Madam President. Yes. Now, um, I, I would like to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Mr. Edwards. Uh, there will be, again, coming from our budgets. Uh, a software monthly fee and going forward in future years again to be discussed with uh, Chief Jones and Chief Lloyd uh, in the within the budgeting process coming up there will be updates necessarily in a monthly fee in the future also um, I just have one question uh, before we approve this um, Mr. Solicitor do we need to identify the specific accounts and amounts that this is coming from this nine thousand nine four hundred ninety four dollars ninety five cents no Okay. Beautiful. In that case, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the award. Uh, uh, approve the award bid for Texas scanning tool to TR Systems LLC, Gilbert, South Carolina, for nine thousand four hundred ninety-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Funding to be coming from the police, fire, and DPW accounts. Second. Did you want to say something? Else? Uh, just one clarification, perhaps might be good to be on the record that um, this is an expensive tool, but um, these days you can't really fix uh, equipment like fire trucks and uh, rescue trucks and what have you without it. Mm -hmm. And if you try to do it, you essentially just make things more expensive in the, in the long run. Uh, instead of having to send out trucks uh, to a private uh, garage and get it fixed there, we now can uh, do a whole lot more of it ourselves. So it should save us ultimately a significant amount of money. Thank you. I have a motion on the phone to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Town Administrator announcements for the annual trumpet treat. Was that in your packet? Yep. I thought, yeah. I thought it was. Yes. <clears throat> Um, I was asked to make that announcement and on October 27th, the Tiverton Library will once again host the Trunk or Treat uh, event. All are welcome. It will be from a quarter to six to 7.30 uh, in the evening. Rain date. Sunday. Rain date will be Sunday. I think this is actually hosted by the Recreation Committee. At the library, right? and, and be prepared to be scared by Randy's display. Thank you. Any other announcement? That's council announcements, right? No. Town no. administrator, Sorry. any other? Nope. Okay. Council announcement. Madam President? Yes. Um, so as this is potentially my last meeting with the council, uh, as well as the rest of us, and certainly Councilor Ryan's last meeting, um, I just wanted to thank uh, my fellow councilors, the solicitor, Madam Clerk, and the administrator, as well as everybody else in the town of Tiverton. And I think we've uh, all had our differences. Um, we, we all certainly come from the same place in wanting to do what's best for the town of Tiverton. So uh, I thank uh, my fellow counselors for the time that we've shared together over the last two years. And hopefully, uh, the six of us at least here will continue on. I will. I, I want to right, rebut. This is our last meeting. I don't want to well, hammer you. Okay. Well, so, uh, you know, well, potentially. <laughs> so I had to sit here and endure Sue Gill's letter. Um, all I have to say is everything I said that day. Nothing was personal against Sue Gill. There was zero. And I know some people looking at me now like, don't let him speak. But you know what? She got her two minutes in the sun. I'm getting mine. And we'll do it here. Or I'll do it on Facebook. So she did it here. Here's the deal. 
I had nothing bad against Sue Gill. I don't even know the woman. I just don't like the way the planning board operates. In my opinion, they don't follow the book. The book is the law. If you don't like the law, change it. And I stand by everything I said that day, and I still won't give anybody the paper, even though it was just nothing on it. But that's just the way it went. So, and that's it. Anyone else? Um, town solicitor? Well, I actually have a, a oh, something I'd like to say, too. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, this being the last meeting of this term, I, I did want to take the time out to uh, thank the town council members for allowing me and my firm to represent the town of Tiverton over these past two years. And I, I speak for uh, all of the members of my firm, not just me, uh, that uh, we really appreciated um, this unique and challenging experience. <laughs> and and I, I just wanted just wanted to thank thank everybody. It was uh, yeah, and it was a learning experience well, too. Uh -huh. It's it's it, it's uh, really something that uh, we re really appreciated. And I'm I'm very thankful that you allowed me to uh, be a part of your town. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Town Clerk, Charter Amendment, Voter Information Guide. Just that you all have a copy of it. Uh, you had it proved to be done. It'll be paid for out of the council contingency. We followed the exact same uh, pattern that I used on 2004 and 2008. Um, the temporary worker in there did a lot of this typing up and, and formatting it in there. So um, they have gone to direct mailing, so they will be mailed out. Hopefully they were mailed out today, but if not today, by tomorrow. We did it as quickly as we could get it done. Thank you, Nancy. It's very nicely done, by the way. Um, John. All right. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to go in a closed executive session. Town Administrator, open space 4246-5A6, acquisition of conservation easement. Second. Yes. 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 And continuing in closed executive session, Council President 4246-5A2, collective bargaining, IBPO, and IAFF. Second. Yes. 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 